Wow, this is, this is amazing. I, um, I started thinking about culture a year ago, and to be here today, it's so surreal. I would have nightmares sometimes about planning Culture Summit, and so I would just close my eyes and try to picture this moment, the energy, and I can tell you it just doesn't compare to the real thing. It's amazing. So thank you for being here. So this morning, I'm going to share a personal story about what inspired me to, to build Culture Summit. And just so I get to know you guys a little bit better, if, uh, if you're a people manager, if you manage employees, can you raise your hand? Oh, wow, that's a lot of people managers. OK, if you are not a people manager, but you help build, impact, shape culture, maybe you work in HR, people ops, or as a consultant, can you also raise your hand? OK, wow. OK, thank you. So, I've never been a people manager, and I've never been in, in a, been in a role to shape or build culture. So my inspiration comes from being a disengaged employee. <laughs> Fighting the system. <laughs> so um, in 2004, I graduated college. I went to work at a company called Sun Microsystems. I joined Sun as a program manager working on enterprise contract management which I had no idea what it was at the time. And, and so I joined because it was a great opportunity. It was a great company. I convinced myself I was going to learn a lot. And for the first two years, I did just that. But by my third year, I started to have a lot of questions, a lot of questions about my role and, and why I was doing it. Because every day when I was in the office, I knew exactly what I was doing as a program manager but why I was doing it, what it meant to me. I couldn't answer those questions. And because I couldn't answer them, I started to uh, lose focus, and I started to get frustrated. My, my quality of my work went down, and eventually I had really bad anxiety that every Sunday I would just freak out because it's Monday the next day. And so in a one-on-one -on -one with my manager, I remember she was not very happy with me, and after about 15 minutes of just listening to her, um, really chew me out, I mustered up enough courage to tell her the reason why I had been performing so poorly was because I needed meaning and I needed impact. I needed to not just see the impact in, in what I was doing, but to feel it as an employee. And what she said to me next, I'll never forget. She said, Hung, I'm this close from firing you right now. <laughs> if you want meaning and impact, you need to look elsewhere. If you want to keep your job, then clean up your act. So I was maybe 25 at the time, and to open up to my manager and have her disregard my feelings and just pretty much shove it in my face made me feel like I was the problem, <clears throat> like I was being selfish, too picky. Maybe I should be grateful I had a job during the recession. So as I moved on in my career and I worked at other companies, I would talk to my colleagues and my peers because I wanted to see who else felt that way. And I realized I wasn't the only one. Other people were also frustrated, disengaged, because they wanted more, but either management didn't support them or the opportunities weren't there. And to me, that felt broken, right? If, if the average person begins working at 21, working 40 hours a week, and they retire at 65, that's 91,520 hours we spend working in our lives. That's a lot of hours to spend being frustrated, being unhappy. I want to change that. So that's why we're here today. We're going to be here to redefine the employee experience, redefine what it means to be happy in the workplace. And we've got an amazing group of speakers from founders to leaders to culture champions building culture, shaping culture at companies with 10 employees, up to 10,000 employees. And they're not just going to share their stories with you. They're going to share the framework, the strategies behind their stories, so you can feel confident enough to go back to your job and apply it directly. But aside from our speakers, we have an amazing group of people. Every person here today is a culture champion. So every person here today can be your support network, your resource, your community, your family. So don't be afraid to introduce yourself to each other. 
a couple quick things. So I'm just a guy sending out emails. Um, <laughs> this wouldn't be possible without my co-producers, so I want to introduce them uh, really quick. This is Damien Ford, Julius Bracasio. <laughs> They're from the creative agency, MTCA. These guys are the creative brains behind the branding, all the marketing collateral, the program, the mirrors you see outside. These guys are just amazing at what they do. Uh, you'll get to hear from them quite a bit as they'll be emceeing today and introducing the speakers. I also want to thank all of our sponsors, Galvanize, Glint, Nitro, Reflective, Lyft, MTCA, Round Peg, Lever, General Assembly, Prevo, and Associates. They're, they're not here just to sell to us. They're also a part of this family. They support what we're building. So when you get a chance, please go see them. In fact, Glint is giving away an, an Apple Watch. So if you want an Apple Watch, talk to Glint. It's underneath your seat. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're going to tweet, the hashtag is Culture Summit SF. If you hear something you like, please, please tweet it out. If you need Wi-Fi, there's a little insert in your program with uh, Wi-Fi information. And at the end of the conference, we're going to have wine and drinks in the speakeasy right across the way. So hopefully you guys can stay. And I'd love to meet each and every one of you.